Friday of the seventh week of Easter. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The response is, The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength, who do his bidding. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. In moments of fear we often fall short of our best. This happened even to Peter, our church's chief apostle and pastor, when terrified he denied Jesus three times. After the resurrection Peter returned to his former job as a fisherman, and Jesus appeared to him by the lakeside and three times asked the incisive question, Do you love me? Peter was no longer the brash, impulsive man of former days, for after betraying Jesus he tasted a flood of humility and remorse. He had returned to the work he knew best, sobered by failure and now ready to get on with his life, with new self-awareness. 
After tasting his own need for mercy he had learned compassion for others, and became the kind of man to effectively lead Christ's church. Not once, not twice, but three times Jesus asks him, Do you love me? Only when Peter answers with humble love and total surrender, Lord, you know everything, does Jesus commission him to feed my sheep. Moving out from Jerusalem into a wider field of mission, Peter brought the gospel message first to Joppa and then Antioch and later to Rome itself. Love, contrition, and obedience to the Lord's prompting became the hallmarks of his ministry. As such, he is the rock of the church and patron of all apostolic people. Even though Peter speaks with authority, there is a quality of patience about him, clearly reflected in his epistle when he writes I, who am an elder myself, appeal to the church elders among you. He is able to love and be loved, humble and open to others in their ideas and talents, aware of sin and able to appreciate the weakness of others, ready to obey Jesus at all costs. This is the authentic Petrine ministry our church reveres and prays for. Jesus singled out Peter from all the apostles and particularly sent him to feed my sheep. He was to be the iconic pastor of the church.